I want you to get paper and pen because I'll be giving out information that you may want to write down. First, please let's remember to stay safe by wearing those masks, using hand sanitizer, maintain social distancing, and wash your hands often. We must stay diligent. And thanks to all those frontline workers, those essential workers, whether you work in, a, in the healthcare industry, delivery service, or grocery store, we truly appreciate you. Join us for Thursday noonday prayer. Dial into the Zoom number of 1-646-558-8656. Meeting ID is 968-170-1049, and the passcode is 920-6844. Look forward to praying with you on Thursday. Please join us Thursday evening for Zoom Bible study at 8 p.m. The Zoom number is 1-646-558-8656 with the meeting ID of 968-170-1049 and a passcode of 920-6844. You can view our Sunday morning services a number of ways. Our website, www.communitynashchurch.org, YouTube at Wyandanche Community Church of the Nazarene, or our platform, communitynazarene.online.church. Our church is publishing an e-newsletter so you can stay connected. If you'd like a copy, text 22828 with the message Community Naz. If you'd like to receive encouragement, please text 474747 with the message Naz Church and you'll begin receiving them. Stay safe and stay blessed. Welcome to the Wine Dance Community Nazarene Church Sunday morning service where the senior pastor is the Reverend David L. Solomon. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We feel blessed that you are joining Wine Dance Community Nazarene Church to worship with us today and pray this morning's service is a blessing to you. Reflect on your goodness, your love and mercy endures forevermore. We sing, Oh, bless the name of Jesus, oh my soul, bless the name of the Lord, oh, 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 oh. bless the name of Jesus, oh my soul. Bless the name of the Lord. Oh 
bless the name of Jesus, oh my soul. Bless the name of the Lord, wonderful counselor, almighty God, the Prince of Peace, the God who heals all disease. Bless your name in this place. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. King of glory, fill this place. Fill this place right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes, the world. We'll bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory. just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Oh, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Yes, the world bow down bow down and say you are God. Every man, every man, bow down, bow down and say you are King. Oh, so let's start right now. Why would we wait? We will praise you. be with you just want to be with you king of glory king of glory fill fill this place i just want to be with you i just want to be with you i 
will sing hallelujah until you come again. Mm. And I'll dance in your presence until you come, come again. I will sing, I will sing hallelujah until you come, come again. And I'll dance in your presence, dance in your presence. Till you come again. Oh, hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Until you come, come again. Oh, and I'll dance. Dance in your presence. Till you come again. Just wanna be with you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Fill this place right now. Hallelujah. King of glory. Fill us afresh right now. Amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing like my God. Man. Amen. Praise the Lord. You give me that joy like a river. You give me that mercy I never deserve. You give me that love, nothing better. You give me that sweet peace I like never before. There's nobody like there's nobody like God, my God. I'm talking about my God, my God. Like God, like God. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about my God, my God. You give me that joy. You give me that joy like a river. You give me that mercy I never deserve. You give me that love, nothing better. Mm -hmm. You give me that sweet peace like never before. My God, my God, there's nobody like God, my God. I'm talking about my God, my God. Mm -hmm. My God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Oh, your love is so amazing. Your love is so amazing. Your love is so incredible. Your love is so incredible. Your love is so amazing. Your love is so amazing. Your love is so incredible. Your love is so Oh, and I never get enough of your love. I never get enough of your love. And I never get enough of your love, Lord. Never get enough of your love. I never get enough of your love, Jesus. Never get enough, never get enough, never. Never get enough, never get enough, never. Never get enough, never get enough, never. I never get enough of your love. I never get enough of your love. I said I never get enough of your love, Lord. Never get enough of your love. I never get enough of your love, Jesus. Never get enough, never get enough, never. I said, I never 
never get enough, never get enough, never. I'll never get enough, never get enough, never. So never. good. So good. So good. So good. My God is so good. Yes, he is. So I never get enough of your love, Lord. Never get enough of your love. I never get enough of your love, Jesus. I never get enough, never get enough, never. Never get enough, never get enough, never. I never get enough, never get enough, never. Never get enough, never get enough, never. I never get enough, never get enough, never. 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 Never get enough, your love. Never get enough, your love. Amen. Praise. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Community Nazarene Church Nation. Amen. We are so glad you are with us today. We are so thrilled that you are uh, watching us online or on YouTube or on the church website. We thank God for you. We praise God that you are following us. Let me encourage you to continue to follow us, amen, and so that the Lord will continue to, and our desire is that the Lord will continue to bless you in whatever you put your hands to do, amen, amen, amen. Before we begin, let us pray. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the way you have been moving among us, the way your Holy Spirit has been empowering us and moving among us and moving through us. We thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit today. I pray, O oh God, for a fresh, a fresh word today for your people in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, may your servant decrease and may your Holy Spirit increase. May what is said and done today, may it be to your honor and to your glory. In your son's name we pray, amen, amen, amen. My topic for today is, is engaging culture, engaging culture, amen. But first of all, let me say we are about, uh, we are about excellence, amen. We are a people of excellence and whatever we do and uh, whatever we say we, we 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 portray excellence amen in ministry we want excellence amen whether it's music or preaching or the production team or whatever it may be we want excellence i also believe that god wants us to do everything with excellence so as we continue to go forward, let us think about excellence, excellence, amen. So engage in culture, engage in culture, amen. Turn with me if you have your Bibles. Uh, you may have a hard copy like this at home or on your mobile device, amen. Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 18. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see the city that to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day and those who happened to be there a group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them ask, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. 
Amen. This scripture says to me that there is some, there is some diversity, amen, that God has created for us. Paul could have said to those who, who were saying that he was just babbling, uh, to those who were probably criticizing every word that he was uttering, uh, he could have said to them, well, later for you guys. Since you guys don't want to hear about the, the power of the resurrection, since you don't want to hear about how Jesus can turn your life around, later for you. He was willing to engage the culture. Amen. He wanted to unintentionally engage the culture. So today, let's define what is culture. What then is culture? Amen. Culture is a way of life of a group of people. The behaviors, the beliefs, the values, language, religion, cuisine... Don't we love the cuisines <laughs> of a different culture? Amen. Social habits, symbols, music, and arts. There's a lot to define, a lot in defining the term culture. Culture is also undeniable. It is unavoidable. You and I cannot run from it. We cannot deny it. We cannot avoid it. It's right there every day in front of us. Whether it's in the marketplace, for instance, like where Paul was in the marketplace with all groups of people, or perhaps in our homes, various cultures, or perhaps you have crossed over your culture, your regular culture, to marry someone else of a different culture. Culture, it's undeniable, and it's unavoidable. So there are three basic, three basic responses to culture. Three basic responses to culture. Number one is we complain, don't we? We complain about culture. For some of us, all day long. Oh, we, 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 we've heard people say, or perhaps you have been engaged in conversations about other cultures. Well, they're not like us. They don't sound like us. They don't eat the same food like us. They don't talk like us. Some of the language they use, it's not like us. And so we, 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 we subtly complain about culture. If we want to see change, we must become the change. If we want to see change, we must become the change. Amen. Complaining will not change anything or anyone. It keeps us divided. Amen. So the second response to culture <clears throat> is we conform to culture. We become similar or, or, or we are in agreement with the standards of the culture. For instance, if you move to a different cult, uh, country, for instance, perhaps, perhaps Germany, you, don't, you and I don't speak the language. We don't quite understand the German culture. And so what do we do? We begin to slowly assimilate into the culture. We start to learn some of their languages. Amen. We, we, we begin to enjoy their cuisines. Amen. We begin to, to go to and learn their music and, and their arts. So we, we slowly assimilate into the culture. Amen. And in order to understand the culture and assimilate, and assimilate into that country, we would need to adapt or conform to the standards of behavior that are expected by that society. 
Amen. The third basic response is we confront culture. We confront culture. Well, 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 well Pastor, what, what exactly do you mean? Do we, do we get into someone's face and, and, and denounce them because of their cultural behaviors? Do we disregard them? Do we disrespect them? Do we speak evil of them? Do we ignore them? See, those are characteristics of confronting, confronting culture. Confrontal culture, we are not to fight against culture. Excuse me. <clears throat> confronting doesn't mean we fight against culture. We embrace and respect all cultures. Amen. Amen. John chapter 3, verse 17, Jesus said, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that in order that the world might be saved through him. So we don't judge or marginalize other cultures. We invite everyone to come to the table, giving them the opportunity to come up. Amen. In other words, we, we open the doors for different cultures, giving them the same opportunity we have as the predominant culture. Amen, Pastor. We don't push cultures to the side, thinking that we are better than. And so it is, and so it is. In confronting culture, we let people know that God did not send his son to condemn anyone, including their customs or their behaviors, or their, 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 their culture. But in order that the world might be saved through him. So Jesus has come to embrace and to engage culture. Amen. So the question for us today is how do we engage culture? How do we engage culture? Ezekiel chapter 37, the first thing we must do, and there are three things I want to talk about today of how do we engage culture. Get close to culture. Amen. We have to get close to culture. Amen. Right there in Ezekiel chapter 37, amen, you will notice that this valley of dry bones, and the hand of the Lord was upon me. Ezekiel is saying, he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. And it was full of dry bones. Here is what I get from this. In order for us to engage the culture, we must get right in the middle of the culture. I know it's difficult. I know it's challenging for us. But in order for us to engage, we must get our, not just our toes wet, but take a deep dive into that culture, to understand that culture. Amen. So, so you'll notice that Ezekiel went up and down. Amen. In the middle of the valley. See, the Lord planted Ezekiel right in the middle of the culture of dry bones. <laughs> he had to get close to culture. When you get close to culture, you understand their struggles. You understand their challenges. It changes your perspective on that particular culture when you get close. So, we have to get close if we are going to engage culture. We must get close. The culture did not come to him, he went to them. Amen. 
God so uh, uh, willed it that, 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 that Ezekiel had to go to the valley of dry bones. I'm sure it was uh, on easy an un uneasy situation for him. I'm sure he felt uh, uncomfortable. But God was with him, amen, as he stepped out to go to the culture. There are times when we are going to be called to go to, 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 to minister or to engage a different culture. Right in our own community. We don't have to travel thousands of miles over the seas to engage a culture right here where we are living, where we are ministering, where we go to work every day. There are different cultures that you and I can engage. Amen. And it continues to say, and he led me around among them. Amen. You see, the Spirit of the Lord led Ezekiel around and among the culture of dry bones, you got to get in it. You have to get with the culture. Rub shoulders with the culture to understand the culture. And behold, there were very many of the surface on the surface of the valley. And behold, the word of God says they were dry. And then he said, to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord, God, you know. Can the culture live among us? Can the culture of today's society dwell with us? Are we willing to accept them for who they are and for what they bring to the table? It's important, it's important that we get close to the culture. If there will be any changes, we have to get close. Amen. Number two, very quickly, number two. Get connected to the culture. We have to get connected. Amen. John chapter 4, and, and uh, this, 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 this here reminds, this is the story of where Jesus was exhausted and, and tired, and he needed to get away from the crowd. So he decided to go to Jacob's well, the poolside. Amen. Sit back and Relax, get some rest and relaxation because he was exhausted. After ministering for days, crowds were following him, healing the sick, causing the blind to see again. Amen. Jesus was exhausted. So he needed to get away. And so he decided to go to Jacob's well. Today, Jacob's well would be Perhaps the neighborhood pool. Amen. To get some fresh air. Amen. With a glass of lemonade. Iced tea, perhaps. Just kicking back, taking it easy. Don't we all need that sometimes? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you were to scroll down in verse 7, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus saw her and he said to her, give me a drink. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? Now, now, if you... Read the scriptures, uh, uh, you'll notice that, that, that uh, uh, the Jews and Samaritans didn't like each other. As a matter of fact, let me use the term here, they hated one another. The Jews saw the Samaritans as the marginalized culture. He saw the Samaritans, uh, uh, he, uh, they looked at the Samaritans and they devalued them. They had no say in the decision-making process. 
that were not invited to the table. So the Samaritans really had a rough time in dealing with the Jews. Amen. There are times when we as a people of God, marginalized people, we just don't like them because, again, as I said before, they don't talk like us. And so we refuse to get connected to the culture. You see, in order to get connected to the culture, we must change our language. I was sharing uh, with my brother this morning how one of the men in the church last week or week before last uh, came to the church and I was here in the office and I asked him to get something. Please go get something for me upstairs in the pew. And he looked at me and said, what? What's the pew? Now, for those of us who are used to the church, we know what the pew is. But guess what? He didn't. So he said to me, you mean the bench? Yes, there you go. It's the bench. That's a change of language. I learned the lesson that, wait a second, some folks don't know what the pew is. And I cannot stand and speak about the pew when that means I can't connect to the folks who don't know what I'm talking about. Our language must change. Amen. We cannot live yesterday and expect the culture of today to adjust to us. Amen, Pastor. <laughs> Our language must change. Amen. John 4, 10, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you you live in water. She came, and all her concern was getting a drink. But Jesus is saying here, I can give you living water. Amen. Changing the language. Getting connected to culture, amen, will cause us to change our language. I realize that this culture have a very unique, their lingo is different. Amen. Their language, the terms they use, you know, is different. I am learning some of them. I'm learning some of the, 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 the terms in texting, you know. The terms, I don't know. I didn't realize it was, what, I-D-K? I said, what is I-D-K? I had to ask, what is I-D-K? I don't know. I figured out uh, a few years ago, OMG meant, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And so there is a language. The language now we, we have to adjust to if we are going to reach this culture, this culture of young people. Amen. That doesn't even think like us or walk like us or talk like us. Amen. They are doing things that we need to get connected to. That's what Jesus is all about. Working with, working with the people that were there. See, he did not immediately, immediately say, you know, and often we think this, well, we have to clean them up and get them fixed up. No, Jesus never had the approach of uh, scaling the fish before I catch it. We want to scale the fish before. Oh, we need to catch the fish first and then begin the scaling process. 
And part of that process, that scaling process, is, is changing our language. So the woman said to Jesus in verse 11, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with. And the well is deep. Look at how the connection is coming here. Where do you get that living water? The door has now been opened for Jesus. Amen. Isn't it amazing? Because of the change of the language, the door became open for him now to share with that woman about the good news. Sometimes we want to share the good news and the door is this tight. And it gets tighter and tighter. Because we are ready, we are so much fired up, and God bless you if you are fired up. Nothing is wrong with you, but we just need to change the language. So, so Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will never be thirsty again. But whoever drinks, will, I'm sorry, will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, she's got it. Language changed. She got it. She's got it. This is what she said. Sir, give me this water. Hallelujah. The language changed. Jesus engaged her, used a different language, and now to the point now where she's saying, hey, give me this water. I'm thirsty. Give me. This is the water I'm really looking for. Give it to me. So that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. The language changed. The language changed. And we, as a church, if we are going to engage the culture, amen, we must, or connect to the culture, we must change the language. Amen. So, my job is, is, is to connect. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict Amen. Let me say it again. My job is to connect, help to connect people, regardless of their culture, regardless of what they look like, where they have come from, what they sound like, what they have and what they don't have. My job is to connect. The Holy Spirit, his job is to convict. We often want, as I said before, to catch, have the fish or to scale the fish before we have it. Amen. The third and final principle here, if we're going to connect or engage with people, get invited. Get invited. Amen. You got to get invited. I was sharing about Zacchaeus. The tree climber. In Luke chapter 10. And you can look at it, verses 1 through 10. Zacchaeus wasn't the most popular guy around. You know he was the tax collector. Tax collectors were, they would come this way. People would run that way. I have finally learned to appreciate tax collectors, CPAs. There were times when I felt a little bit like some of these folks who ran from, the, from Zacchaeus. The IRS is, has become a friend now to me. But back then, Zacchaeus this tax collector man. He was rich. The crowds had surrounded Jesus. So, because of 
Zacchaeus' height or stature, he could not see Jesus. So he decided he was going to climb up into a sycamore tree to get a better look of the Messiah, Jesus. So guess what? Everyone started fussing, grumbling, complaining, criticizing. How could he dare get invited to go to Zacchaeus's house? Zacchaeus is a sinner. Zacchaeus is despicable. Zacchaeus is the guy who no one wants to, to talk to because of his profession. No one wanted to bother with him. As I said a few minutes ago, they would run from him when they saw him coming. But yet Jesus, yet Jesus got invited to come to his house. You see, Jesus looked at Zacchaeus and saw that he was valuable. Amen. He was highly favored. He was precious in the sight of God. Jesus was not about to marginalize Zacchaeus. Despite Zacchaeus being underestimated. As a matter of fact, Zacchaeus probably today would have been unfriended on Facebook and Twitter. I'm probably even blocked on your mobile device. He was that kind of guy that people just didn't care for. Amen. But yet, he got invited to come to Jesus. Amen. So hear me. It doesn't matter what quality you bring to the table or the quantity you bring to the table. The key is you need to be invited. Get invited. Everyone has the opportunity to get invited. Amen. So in order for us to engage culture, we must get invited. You see, he was extending, Jesus was extending grace and acceptance open, and open arms to Zacchaeus before he had repented or changed anything about his life. If you read the story, nothing took place. Jesus was offering grace and, and love and, and peace and hope to Zacchaeus. Despite Zacchaeus had it all things going well. You see, Jesus was willing to associate and identify with the culture. What a model we have today as believers. The church, I say to you, the church must be disrupted when it comes to culture. We've got to change. We've got to accept people just the way they are. Amen. We cannot expect to change people. We are not we are not the agents of change. We're not. We can't change. I can't change anyone. Jesus does the change. And as we continue to engage culture, it may be painful in engaging a different culture. We are going to have to become better listeners, better people who understand and, 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 you know, and not walk away from culture, not walk away and, and mutter something underneath our breath that what's wrong with these people? That's not how we engage culture. We've got to. We've got to do whatever we need to do to ensure that we are engaged in culture and bringing people to Jesus. Amen.
Oh, the culture may, may walk in here, or, or you may see the culture with holes in their jeans, or a, a beat-up T-shirt, uh, may not be looking that well at all, but we still have to engage them. May not smell that well at all, but we still have to engage them. We have to meet them where they're at. You see, we cannot invite them. We have to go to them. Amen. And the first place we should be going is to the wine dance park. That's where the culture is hanging out. That's where they spend a lot of time. And their music may be loud and blasting and, and, you know, and different. That's okay. That's the culture we're dealing with. Amen. Oh, you may walk down straight path and, and, and the culture you'll notice, uh, you may find a, a Haitian brother or a Haitian sister who may look a certain way, walk a certain way, sung a certain way. We don't walk on the other side like, 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 like the priest and the pastor did. The good Samaritan. And leave them alone. We face culture, engage culture head on. Amen. So church today, I want to encourage us. And you're watching this service today on our platform. I want to encourage you today to engage the culture. It's either we engage the culture or we die. Every culture is important in the sight of God. And we feel the same way as well as we model our love for Jesus and our love for one another. Right where you are, would you just bow your head with me? Thank you, Jesus, that you have modeled for us in your word. How do we engage culture? How do we change our language? What do we say? Father, we need you to help us. Teach us how to be more engaging. May this moment or this experience today be a testing ground for us as to how we engage one another, how we engage each other is a reflection of how we engage culture, people that don't look like us. So help us today. You have given us a model. May we adopt your template on engaging culture. And Jesus will forever give you the praise, the honor, and glory. In your son's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. We certainly thank you for choosing to worship with the Community Nazarene Church. You have the opportunity to visit our website at www.communitynazchurch.org where you will be informed of our online platform as well as service times. Again, we thank you and hope that this message was a blessing to you today. Before we depart, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the very precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to yet again hear your word. Lord, we are just moved by the fact that it is time for us to engage culture. Lord, we want to say thank you for how you are guiding us, ordering our steps, wrapping your loving arms around us, and a hedge of protection around each and every individual here. Lord, we want to say thank you for the leadership of this church and our pastor. Lord, we want to say thank you that these the doors of this church Remain open to come and embrace those who want to know how magnificent you are. Lord, we thank you for just continuing to protect us as we go forward into this week with your love on our hearts and minds. Lord, thank you. 
Let all God's children say, Amen. You are dismissed.